Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. Anthony Alfredo was at Daytona International Speedway for the very first time. With new rules in place, the 21-year-old Ridgefield, Connecticut driver had no practice laps, no qualifying, and took to the track for the very first time under race conditions. Anthony took the green flag from a 13th starting position and started his move towards the front and ran as high as third before an incident on lap 40 caused front end damage and the car just wasn't the same after that. Let's hear directly from Anthony. Hey everyone, just finished my first race at Daytona International Speedway and uh, definitely not how we'd hoped uh, my first trip here would go. Uh, that's just a product of Super Speedway Racing. I mean, we finished the race, but we were by ourselves. We had so much front end damage from uh, when they stacked up for a wreck that it was just like a giant parachute on the front of the car, and I couldn't do anything. I actually was pretty fast in the pack and could maintain, but nobody wanted to work with me just because I had damage, and we got shuffled out quick, and we were just hanging on. But the beginning of the race went well. We had a really fast pyro putty Camaro, and everyone at Richard Childress Racing did a great job. My favorite part about this team is that we win as a team and we lose as a team. Every single person knows that. Um, I kind of wish uh, we were able to stay up front. You know, we got up there, we were running the top three with our colleague teammates and uh, just got back there and strategy didn't go our way uh, and just got stuck in a wreck, which is uh, how most of these races go. So we did all we could. Thank you all for the support and uh, look forward to the next one to be better. Tough break, but that's Speedway Racing. Up next for Anthony, NASCAR Xfinity at Darlington Raceway on Saturday, live on NBC at 12.30 Eastern Time. Jesse Love visited Worldwide Technology Raceway in Madison, Illinois for the very first time for the Arkham Menard Series Showdown. Jesse took to the mile and a quarter oval with only 10 laps of practice, no qualifying, and had to start from the 17th starting position. The Menlo Park, California driver showed a great deal of patience throughout the race and brought home a fifth place finish. Up next for Jesse, back to the dirt for some power eye and wing sprint car races before heading to All-American Speedway on October 10th for his next ARCA start. Connor Mozak turned in another top 10 finish in eighth at Virginia's Langley Speedway in round seven of the Cars Tour, a 125 lap event driving the number 88 for Junior Motorsports. Connor started the race 19th due to a slight bobble in turn two during qualifying. However, he patiently raced his way forward, trying to conserve his tires for a late race charge. Connor ran as high as seventh before the car's handling started to go away and eventually finished eighth. Connor still sets third in points heading into Carteret County Speedway on September the 12th. However, up next for Connor is this weekend at Hickory Motor Speedway for the Bobby Isaac Memorial on Saturday. Grant Thompson competed in twin 75 lap features at Five Flags Speedway in the Augie Grill number 112 Pro Late model. Grant started P7th in the first race and brought home a fourth place finish against a strong field of 21 cars. In race two, Grant started sixth, moved up to fourth by lap 10, and stayed there for the next 65 laps, bringing home another fourth place finish. Let's get a quick race recap direct from the driver. Hi, hey, race fans, Grant Thompson here. This past Friday, we just had the twin 75 lap pro late model race. And uh, going into this race, I felt like I had a pretty good shot in a, a top five finish. So, um, you know, going into the first race, I thought we'd have a pretty good qualifying spot. And um, we went out there, and I didn't qualify the best, but I feel like I done. I felt like I could have done a little bit better. And um, we ended up starting P7, which wasn't too bad. And um, we took the green, and the outside lane just didn't go. And I got a really good start, and the bottom lane just kept going. And I ended up going from, like, 7th to 4th in one corner. So that was really good for us. But, um, you know, after that, as the feel kind of spread out I was just trying to get into a rhythm to find out where other where the other guys were, were racing at just to see what was faster and I ended up getting a fourth place finish which was, which was really good 
And then going into the second race, I believe I started P6, so on the outside lane, just to see what I could do on the outside. And we took the green, and the car in front of me missed a shift, and we ended up having another restart. So when we took the green again, I fell back to about seventh, and then we had, a, and then they had a big wreck on the back straightaway. And um, luckily, I was able to get through that. But in both races, we ended up coming home with a fourth place finish. So top five was my goal for that. And um, you know, I can't do everything. I can't do anything without Augie Grill or PFC Brakes, AR Bodies, Grand American Race Cars, WCI Parts dot com and Roger and Bobby Roos, so just thank them for everything they do, and hopefully I will see you at the next Pensacola race. Nice job, young man. Up next for Grant, championship weekend for the Pro Trucks at Five Flags Speedway on September the 12th. Caden Honeycutt pulled double duty this weekend in his Dirt Mod and Dirt Late Model. On Friday night, Caden finished third at Heart of Texas Speedway in his Dirt Mod. Then on Saturday night at Big O Texas Speedway in his Sport Modified, he qualified in eighth and parked it in victory lane. In his Dirt Late model, he dominated. He sat on the pole, won his heat race, and brought home the victory in the A main. Let's hear from Caden. Wow, just, just wow right now. I'm so proud of everybody that worked hard uh, today. Uh, we uh, won the sport mod race and we won the late model race tonight uh, at Big O Speedway, and I'm just I'm just so I'm just so thankful for everything. Uh, we won both races, and it's just I've never accomplished something like this before, and it's just absolutely mind blowing. And uh, we worked very hard uh, tonight, and you know Friday we finished third in the limited, also at Waco, and we kind of struggled. We didn't really like what we had, so we went back and made sure everything was right. And uh, we came back and won both races tonight. A really thrilling finish, three wide finish. So um, next weekend, we're gonna be back in the late bottle at RPM uh, on Sunday. So uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna make y'all some videos, make sure thing y'all up to date and everything. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, here in a couple days. Up next for Caden, Dirt Modifieds on Friday night at Boyd Speedway, Dirt Modifieds on Saturday, and Dirt Late Models on Sunday, both at RPM Speedway of Texas. Sam Butler was at Hickory Motor Speedway for twin 40 lap features. In race number one, he started third and moved into second, but there were not enough laps for him to run down race winner Josh Berry. On to race number two, Sam started eighth due to the invert, and he was patiently moving through the field to third and was battling the 98 car for second, running side by side for several laps before connecting in turn two, spinning Sam out. He was able to keep the car from hitting the wall and others did a great job of not hitting him. Sam made a quick visit to the pits and had to restart in 19th with only 10 laps remaining, but drove up to a 10th place finish. Up next for Sam, this weekend, the Bobby Isaac Memorial at Hickory Motor Speedway. Haley Constance was at Deming Speedway with her 600R Micro Sprint. Haley qualified third overall, was third in her heat race, and finished fifth in the A main. Haley also made the trip to Evergreen Speedway for a Junior Hornet race, where she finished second. Up next for Haley, Junior Late Models at Hermiston Raceway on September the 6th. Here at Raceface, we would also like to congratulate Sheldon Creed on his NASCAR Truck Series win at Gateway over the weekend. And a big shout out to Sam Mayer for coming home in fourth. That's it for this week's Raceface Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel from all of your favorite race face drivers. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.